All right, everyone, welcome to my channel. And um, today we're going to be discussing this problem about uh, Castagnano's theorem. So many people have been asking me this question and uh, saying that they have trouble with this problem. So I just thought it would be a good idea for me to just go over it. Uh, it's a very simple problem, easy, and we can just be done in a, just a few minutes here. All right, so the question says, uh, prove by Castigliano's theorem that uh, deflection at midspan equals to 5 W L to the 4 over 384 EI. All right, and um, right here in front of me, I have a beam, right? I've got a beam, and that is point A, and that is point B, all right? So uh, we have a pain support here, and we have a... Uh, roller support here and we all know that a roller support uh, produces a vertical force all right and uh, a pin support produces both horizontal force and a vertical force but in this case we might not have a horizontal force it's just going to be zero okay uh, Castigliano's theorem basically says that uh, where you want to put where you want to find deflection just insert an unknown force P, just like the way I did here. And in this case, we want to find it at midspan. So that's why I put my force P right in the center, all right? All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is just kind of draw a free body diagram. Uh, just demonstrating what is going on in this problem right here. So I've got a roller, I mean, a, uh, a pain support right there, and I've got a roller here, okay, and we said that a, a pin is, just produces force horizontally, as well as a roller produces a force horizontally, okay, all right, at the same time, we have force P coming down, and I'm also going to add it to that W right there, okay, and it's going to be WL, right the force times the distance okay so for these forces right here to be equal to this one we need to uh, this force got to be P over 2 plus WL over 2 likewise this P over 2 plus LW over 2 okay so check it out so this is what just happened here we have a force P going down, and then we have these halves right here going up, so they're balanced, okay? And then right here we have LW going down, okay? And then here we have LW over 2 plus LW over 2 giving us LW, and they're all going up, okay? So everything is balanced right now, okay? And then we have obviously our distance right here. All right, cool. Let's proceed. So the next thing I'm going to do is just create a simple cut in this beam right here. And this is how the cut is going to look like. All right. Uh, don't forget your distributed load up here. Okay. And obviously when it's going to be W. And uh, since I just cut it at a random distance, I'm just going to call that distance X. Because I obviously don't know that distance. Okay. So call that distance X. And then I still have my vertical force here, which is right here. P over 2 plus LW over 2. Now, whenever you cut something, whenever you cut a beam, there's always going to be shear force here. Okay, I'll call that P. And then obviously there's also going to be a mo moment for formed. And I'll call that moment a P. Okay. So we have this force, which is at A upward force then we have the distributed load all right and then we have shear and then we have the moment right there next what i'm going to do is take moments and i'm going to take moments about point p all right so i'm going to have i'm going to say summation of moments about point p must be equal to zero and then make sure you indicate the direction. All right, so what are we going to have here? We're going to have MP. Just bring this here to kind of refer to it. I'll have MP 
plus Wx x over 2 Wx that will give us the force times the distance all right and then we have that distance um, what else do we have here so I've considered the MP then I've also taken this W times the distance times half the distance and whatever is left is just going to be this vertical force here and that's going to be minus P over 2 plus WL over 2 all this must be equal to zero according to equilibrium all right so when you manipulate all this you should end up having W x squared over 2 plus P over 2x plus WLx over 2. So this is my moment at point P, at this very point right here. This is point P, all right? Sweet, all right. So next, what I'm gonna do is introduce to you the formula for finding deflection, okay? So the formula for finding deflection equals to deflection at midspan, okay, since that is what we're interested in finding is going to be equal to the integral of 0 to L over 2. Okay? Then I'm going to have the moment of X over EI. EI, these are just constants. Don't worry about them. Uh, they should be given in the problem. So it's just plugging and chugging in there. Okay? Just in case you're given. All right. And then we also have the partial moments of P with respect to X. So that is my formula for finding deflection. So after that, uh, what I need to find out, keep in mind that this moment right here is moment when P equals to zero. All right. So I'm going to find that next moment when P equals to zero. And what that basically means is that this is my moment of P. Okay. So moment at P equals to zero means where P, where I see P, I'm just going to denote that as zero. So this whole term is going to disappear and I'm just going to be left with this and that. All right. So since this is positive, I'm going to start with that. WLX over two minus WX squared over two. So that's my moment when P equals to zero. So next, I'm also going to find the partials, partial of M, well, with respect to P, okay? So to find that, I come back here, and since this is the only term that has the P, and I want to find a partial derivative of P with respect to X, and that's P over 2X, okay? So what we're going to have is just x over 2. So come down here and just say x over 2. So that is my partial term which goes right here. So I now have this and I have this. So I'm good to go. All right. Okay, let me just put that right there. So next what I'm going to do, all right, let me just write rewrite the formula here. Okay, mid span equals to 0 over 2 uh, moment of x over ei and then the partial of the moment with respect to p and then all this should be with respect to x all right all right so integral 0 to l over 2 and since these e and i values are constants i can always feel free to take them out outside the integral okay next what is my moment I come back here and I find my moment right there which is L I mean sorry WLX over 2 minus WX squared over 2 all right and I've just written down it right here and then times uh, these partial derivatives here and the partial derivatives right here, we just obtain it as x over 2. 
So I'm just going to come down here and just denote it as x over 2. All this with respect to x. So what I'm going to do next is just multiply everything throughout. So I'm going to have w lx squared over 4 minus, okay, minus wx cubed over 4 dx. All right. So next, since W is common, I can always pull it out over EI. Then I have 0 to L over 2. Then I'm left with LX squared over 4 minus X cubed over 4. So now I can go ahead and find, I mean, take the derivative here. So we're going to have w over ei now i'm going to take the derivative i mean sorry take the integral sorry um so it's just going to be l x cubed over there's a 12 okay three times four minus this turns into a four over 16 okay all right so i have that I'm sorry, I'm just I'm gonna have to do this with a lot of paper here. But anyways, so we have that. Let me just continue right here. W over EI, and I have LX cubed over 12 minus X to the fourth, 16. So next, what I gotta do is introduce the limits right here from 0 to L over 2 okay so we have W E I okay when you put the limits there we're gonna have L to the 4 over so there's gonna be 2 cubed that's 8 so 8 times 12 that's a 96 minus all right and then here we'll have L to the 4 over um, 2 to the 4th, that's a 16. 16 times 16 gives us 256. Alright, so that's done. So, one more thing here you need to keep in mind is that since this, since you made the cut for half the beam, this whole calculation is going to take place for half the beam, okay? But keep in mind, we need to find the deflection for the entire beam. So since you're considering halfway, and since we need it to be the whole beam, we're going to have to multiply here by a 2, okay? To take care of the whole beam. All right, with that being the case, I'm just going to have 2W over... EI okay and then here I can go ahead and find um, the common denominator and that's going to be 96 times 256 96 times 256 it's going to give us 24576 and since at the numerator I have L to the 4 I can always pull it out right there, take it outside, and then, so you're just going to say 2457 divided by 96, you get 256 minus 96, the numerator, and then that's going to leave us with 2WL to the 4th over EI, okay, so up top we're going to have 160 over let me just confirm that one more time. 256 minus 96. 160 it is. Okay. 2, 4, 5, 7, 6. Okay. So next, what I got to do is just multiply. So I have 2 times 160. W, L to the 4 over 2, 4, 5, 7, 6, E, I. So when you... When you solve this you just end up having 
5 w l to the 4 over 384 e i and this my friends is the deflection at mid span of a beam using Castiglianos Castiglianos theorem all right uh, like I said it's a very simple problem um, it's a very common problem too you trust me you will find it in one of your quizzes or tests or whatever but uh there you have there you have it uh, feel free to subscribe and uh, like my video and if you think this video was beneficial for you just go ahead and comment write me a comment or shoot me an email or if you have any other questions you would like for me to you know work or any problems you would like me to work just feel free and let me know and there we have it till next time thank you